Our friend Marla Newburn, a former prison psychologist who was a great inspiration for this page, he used to talk about how black criminality is not only wildly out of proportion by the numbers, but it's also wildly out of proportion in the quality of the crime and the sadistic quality of the crime. And nowhere is that illustrated greater in this week. We did two videos this week where one black person was convicted of torturing and killing a white child and another black person in a Baltimore daycare center was arrested for doing the same thing. But if, 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 if black violence against infants is wildly out of proportion, what's really off the charts is when we talk about black violence against old people. I mean, there was a black caretaker in a, 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 an old folks home in, in Georgia. He was in charge of this woman and he intentionally broke her leg. She died on the operating table. He's been charged with murder. I mean, up in LA just a couple days ago, a bunch of black people did a home evasion on an old guy and a son, beat him up really, really badly. Old people are targets. But let's, let's, let's go through a couple of videos and a couple of stories of black on senior violence and, and each time, re, remind, re, remember, this is not just in a vacuum, but this is something that hap is happening all over the country. Come on, man. What's up, Why are you doing that shit, cuz? Come on, man. So I don't feel like it, man. What's up, cuz? Bitch, come on, man. Come on, bro. What's up, bro? What's up, man? Come on, bro. I ain't done, bro. I'm not done, bro. Come on, bro. I'm not done. Give me a break, bro. Give me a break, bro. I don't give a fuck, bro. What's up, man? Bitch, what's up? I'm not about to play with you, dog. What's up? Give it a break, man. Bro, I ain't give a shit. Hey, give it a break, fam. I ain't give a shit a break, cuz. I don't give a fuck, bro. Come on, man. Give him something, bro. Hit him, hit him hard. Hit him hard. Bitch, what's up, bro? Bitch, what's up? Stop fucking playing with me, bro. Bitch. Hey, hold it, hold it. Uh oh, uh oh. No, come on, we done, dog. Let oh, me fucked up. Andy. I'm not playing, cuz. Let me see. The fuck? Damn, G. Damn, G. Damn, G. Police are warning people to be careful and to lock their doors and windows after yet another home invasion targeting senior citizens. It's the fourth such incident on the northwest side in the past couple of weeks. CBS 2's Sandra Torres is live in the Belmont Craigie neighborhood where a couple was targeted overnight. Sandra. Hi, Mai. The good news here is that this couple was not hurt. They are shaken and they are saying that they fear they may have to move now. Even after living in their home for 44 years, they don't, they no longer feel safe. I did say, what you doing here? Why are you here? Get out of my house. Stanley Markowski describes the moment he saw a stranger standing inside his home in the middle of the night. He says, give me your money and your money and your jewelry and your dope and your pills and all, everything or else. Chicago police say it happened around one in the morning. A man used this kitchen window to invade the home in the 5100 block of West Wellington Avenue. He just took me and put me, you know, like go in your room, in this room here. And my wife had jewelry in there and stuff. And you start taking, smoking and stuff, throwing it on the floor what he didn't want and put, then he took a pillowcase and start putting stuff in there. Fortunately, they were not hurt, but the thief got away with money and jewelry, including their 60 year old wedding rings. This is unacceptable. Alderman Millie Santiago visited the Markowskis this morning, concerned this is the fourth home invasion in the area in the past week. It breaks my heart when these individuals are targeting seniors, the most vulnerable people. And while Chicago police say they have good leads in the case, officers are going door to door, warning residents so they can avoid becoming a victim. Want to make sure that the residents see a see a bigger presence in this area not that they don't anyway but it's always good to see more officers especially when something like this is going on and commander Escamilla believes that all four of these home invasions are connected and that is because of the description of the suspect or suspects it is all similar in nature reporting live and from the belmont craigan neighborhood hi yes and uh, aaron and lionel this incident
happened in the Belmont Cregan neighborhood, but those victims were brought here to Illinois Masonic in good condition. That's what we're told, that they are in good condition considering they were hit several times in the head and the face. As residents on this quiet block began their morning routine, they learned about what happened to their neighbors in the middle of the night. Thieves broke into their home, attacked them, and robbed them. Can't believe that uh, something like that would have happened to anybody on the block. Chicago police say it happened around midnight. One, possibly two suspects wearing black hoodies broke into the home and hit an 81-year-old man and a 77-year-old woman in the head before taking off with the woman's purse. It's a shame that happened. They're very limited on their ability to be able to move. Video shows emergency crews placing one of the victims in an ambulance with a bandage on their head. It's, it's unacceptable. Crisis responder Andrew Holmes visited the neighborhood this morning, passing out flyers and seeing if anyone has surveillance cameras that possibly captured images of the suspect or suspects to help police find them. This is 70 some years old, 81 years old. They, they're helpless. And if it was two of you all, you all are some punks. That's just simple as that. You're just some punks and some cowards. Punks and cowards. We got enough with gun violence, but then you want to come in and take advantage of two seniors in their home, something they work for. And this violent robbery happened just three miles when this, where this 78-year-old grandmother was beaten and robbed in her home last week. And you can see Miranda Santos' face was left black and blue. A GoFundMe page has been created to help her pay for medical bills. And Andrew Holmes tells me that he just learned of a third incident similar in nature within a mile of last night's attack. A man watching over a South Florida business when he became the victim of a savage crime. I'm still shocked of what happened. This man was the sweetest thing ever. Police finding the victim stabbed and shot. Officers say two teens had no mercy for this 79-year-old father. He leaves behind 14 children. And 7 News reporter Rosh Lowe is in southwest Miami-Dade with this exclusive tonight. Rosh. This was just a vicious murder. Here you have somebody who was 79 years old. He used to sit out here on this chair here behind me. In fact, you can still see his stick and his hat, which they have left here. The owners here wanted to give him a place to stay, but he was too weak to fight back, to fight back, cops say, against two teens who brutalized him. This is 79-year-old Silvio Diaz. It's a photograph, say friends, taken several months ago when he was visited by one of his daughters on the right. Silvio say co-workers had 14 children. He spent day and night here at Rennie's used car dealership in Southwest Miami-Dade, off US-1 and Southwest 228th Street. You can see a picture of Silvio here in his younger years in Cuba. Employees say the owners took him in, giving him a place to work and to sleep. I loved him like no words could explain. 16-year-old Hilda Infante knew Silvio well. Her dad works at the dealership. Nothing got in his way. He was such a tough man. He was loving to everyone. His life would end in a horrible fashion. It was a gruesome scene, so disturbing. We have blurred the blood in this picture. Sunday night, May 7th, cops say he was murdered. Silvio's killers, say cops, two 15-year-old teenagers, Derek Warren and Edward Lopez. I started crying and just like, I miss his presence so much. According to police, the teens walked past Rennie's on that Sunday evening and they ran into Silvio. Cops say Silvio told the teens to leave. The teens returned 30 minutes later. Cops say Silvio was stabbed repeatedly and shot at multiple times. When cops found the 79-year-old, he was lying in a pool of blood with a gunshot wound to the head. Cops say the teens terrorized Silvio. And after Silvio, the 79-year-old was beaten and stabbed and shot to death. These suspects say cops decided to take several cars from this used car dealership and just go on joy rides. There's one car, as you can see right here, involved in a crash. He was a deeply religious man. He believed that he was watched and safeguarded. 
He set up this shrine with religious artifacts. It was here where he died. Hilda still believes Silvio is being watched. I'm going to miss him a ton, and I still do, but I know he's in a better place right now where he's with God, and he doesn't have to worry about anything. I know these videos are hard to watch, especially these videos of black on senior violence. But sometimes the more, the more difficult it is to watch, the more important it is to watch. I was talking to one of our great viewers the other day. I won't tell you his name, but he, you see him on the, um, the video channel and the comments is true to roof. And he was, ta he was talking about what all of us can do with these videos, because that's the big question we get. What can I do? What can I do? So he gives them to his family, gives them to his friends. He just gives them to him and says, hey, did you see this? Did you see that? And here's the thing that True to Roof knows that all of us have to know too. When you're planting a seed, it's going to take a while to grow. You planted a, these, these, these videos and my books, they plant a seed. And I don't know what's going to make the seed of recognition and knowledge grow. I don't know what's going to strip the, 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 the clouds from a lot of people's eyes. But if the seed is there and all of a sudden somebody's cousin gets jammed up, all of a sudden you see something on TV, all of a sudden you hear a fairy tale on NPR, you're at least going to have something in the back of your mind going, hey, I just saw a video that basically says that's 100% untrue. So keep sharing these videos. Keep liking. Keep telling your friends. Don't do anything to get fired. Don't do anything to lose your job. You know, the other day we got a, I got an email or a phone call from one of our great viewers up in Massachusetts, Jim. Hey, Jim. And Jim was reminding me that we have to tell, you know, kind of remind people how to use these videos. So if you have grandparents or aunts and uncles or mom or dad in these neighborhoods, they have to know their targets. It doesn't matter how tough they were. It doesn't matter if they've been in that neighborhood for 87 years. It doesn't matter. Everything's different now. They're targets. They're targets of black hostility and black violence that you turn on NPR day after day after day. People are excusing it. I just finished a video on that. Guy is a, prof a black professor at Yale Law School. Spent 20 minutes on NPR the other day telling me why black people are not responsible for, cr for crime in this, their own crime in this country. The craziest thing about this professor at Yale is not the fact that he looked white, but he was actually black. His father was black. But the fact that he was on NPR telling us, you know what, there's all this black criminality out there, but black people aren't responsible for any of it because of lack of education, lack of this, lack of that. And of course, the big boogeyman of all, the most important thing of all, white racism. I can't imagine anything more dangerous than people on, in the media explaining to, to black people why they are not responsible for clunking an old person over the head and killing them. I mean, if you give somebody a reason to do it, all of a sudden you become an accessory to that crime. And so every day it's like a new professor on NPR or MSNBC or CNN, a new person explaining to us why all this stuff, we're just making it all up, why we are imagining it all. That's why these videos are so important. That's why my books are so important. The other day we did a story about um, the Black Bike Week in, in, uh, in Myrtle Beach and how it's been going on for a long time and how some crazy things are happening there. Well, I didn't really talk about the craziness that much because, you know, every episode, right, is part of a bigger context and I can't go back and do it 30 minutes on every single thing. But we do get into this stuff in detail in my books. So if you want to know about Black Bike Week at, at, at Myrtle Beach and how it's a total wreck of humanity and black chaos and black mob violence year after year after year predictable and how the craziest thing of all is they have a, they have a Harley 
ride one week before, which is no problem. The black riders come in the next week and it costs the city a million dollars extra to police that event. So, you know, so keep asking the question what you can do besides, you know, just watching these videos. You can share them, you can like them, you can read the books, get the books on Amazon. You can contribute to this channel on PayPal because guess what? Not everybody is in a position to do something. If you have a job, if you have a family that might prevent you from being as outspoken or as active on this as you want, just support the people who can do it. I can do it. That's why I am doing it. I set my life up. I got my own boss. I don't have to worry about anybody, you know, calling my boss and saying, you got to fire that Colin because he's a bad person. Totally absent from that. So let's keep, it, let's keep in mind what we're doing around here. Let's keep in mind what you can do. You could probably do more than you think you can do. And you don't have to worry about making the black kids angry. <laughs>